drama in the England game and the Tongue and Simone game. I mean, the New Zealand Australia game's amazing. So let's hope this delivers. Here they come out of the tunnel at Old Trafford. Fantastic crowd in here. There are plenty of Samoan flags being waved. The fireworks are going off. It is the Rugby League World Cup 2021 men's final. England have won the wheelchair. Australia have won the women's. Will their men do the double? Find out over the next 80 minutes with us here and our commentary team of the former Great Britain coach, Brian Noble, the former Great Britain star, Jonathan Davis, and our commentator, Dave Woods. What a noise, what a noise to bring these two sides out at this iconic stadium. What a crowd here as well today, considering there's no home nation interest in this World Cup. There is still plenty of rugby league interest. Australian fans here, Samoan fans here. A lot of neutrals will be backing the team in blue today as well. Rugby League World Cup history being made. For the first time, a team other than Great Britain or England, Australia, New Zealand or France is also competing for that trophy. The first time since 1954 when that trophy was first inaugurated. Feel the heat. We're going to have the anthems. The Samoan anthem sung by Uituelangi Aiveli Cole. And now and the Australian anthem to be sung by the Emilia National Bertolini. Anthem of Australia, performed by Emilia Bertolini. Doesn't that set the scene? Mal Meninga, a legend of a rugby league player and rugby league coach. Is he going to inspire his side today to yet another Australian World Cup victory? This is the side he's chosen. No changes from last week. Unchanged in their bruising semi-final win against New Zealand. Winger Josh Adokar, 
needs one try to become a record-breaking try scorer at a World Cup. He has 12 at the moment so far. Samar, well, they've been forced into so many changes since that opening day defeat to England. Tim Lafay, who wasn't even in the squad that day, been a sensation since he's been drafted in. Chanel Harris Tavita starts at hooker because of New Brown's injury. Martin Tapao comes in. And this is a moment we have been looking forward to. We look forward to it every time. The Manu Civita with Junior Paolo at the lead. is going to be earth shaking what a scene Old Trafford packed to the rafters there's the Australian side just to remind you a real rich seam of talented players NRL stars running right through that Nathan Cleary keeping the halves position despite the fact he's saying he's not at the top of his game. Well, if there is a game to produce your best, this is it. And a reminder of the Samoan team as well. They too have that rich seam of NRL stars running through. The Penrith connection, especially in the backs, could be absolutely crucial today. So many individual battles to look forward to. Ashley Klein, the referee, Chris Kendall, the video referee. Two Englishmen on the sidelines, Jack Smith and Warren Turley. What a big day for him. As the most diverse and inclusive playing population in rugby comes together, we want to celebrate the amazing athletes. So many like for likes in terms of star quality on both sides. Joseph Sualihi, the wonder kid of the NRL. He plays with the Sydney Roosters. He doesn't normally get a starting position at fullback. Because of that man in the Australian shirt, James Tedesco, another Roosters star. That's just one to watch today. Luai against Cleary, the Penrith brothers in the halves. Paolo against Campbell Gillard. 
the Parramatta Bulldozers up against each other in the front row. It's Australia against Samoa. It's the new world of rugby league against the old world of rugby league. Whatever happens today, this is history. Samoa, the first Pacific Island nation in a rugby league World Cup final. Can they take it one stage further and win it? Or is it Australia? Who just proved to Thunderous? Wait, wait, go. One. Keep holding Jaden. They one. have early possession, a chance to bring it clear. So let's hear just change, from Brian away. Noble, the former Jayden Great two. Britain coach, and Jonathan Davis, the former Great Britain international. Well, Samoa have a huge challenge Three. today, Dave. They've got the process machine that is Australia. Big hey, games, hey, hey, know how to play the long game. Samoa okay, two today have to play the long Do game with them, up. but have to be a little bit more right. expansive Get for me to get some spoils yeah. against this wonderful Australian team. But gosh, we've got P.T. Barnum's rugby league Last circus here, boy. Jiffy. Yeah, it's great. It's a great atmosphere. Hey, and I think the boys summed it up in the studio well. You know, the Australians will come down the middle, they'll be intense, they'll be fast, and they won't, there'll be no letter. But the Samoans, they've got to keep the plus discipline, Dave. That's the key for them, and the offload game will have to come in, but nothing stupid. Suali, he runs. He doesn't care if he gets hurt. He just runs. Unbelievable. No matter what's in his way. And Samoa trying to build here. Their wait, first wait, wait, set wait. of six as they shift it towards that right hand side. Jake Moon! So a, wait here, wait. a dummy half. Okay, it is Harris Tavita back towards the middle again. Samoa looking for a route right Hell down up. through the guts of the Australian Last defense. Wait, so Alihi wait. held up. Okay, Last off. play in the set. Yeah, Kicked Lee, Lee away up. by Jerome Luai. It's right, high in the up. air. Holmes underneath it. Just a little okay. bit of a nervous juggle, but safely taken in. Stand now. Australia's one, second set. Hold here, go. One. So physical in these early stages. So Three, physical. Go yeah, they've got to be okay. very patient. Okay. Both sides, okay. if you're looking for a mis an I'm error in their own or opposition uh, 20 Three, meter down. just to get a tight you know, opportunity. Away, but it. nothing silly, okay. good yardage, good kick. Here's Tedesco, the okay. full back up in so position, now, up now. in the Andy line. Steven. Into dummy Hold half here. goes He's Ben Hunt. Normally in the halves. Little dummy thrown by Munster. Last tackle, Anthony! Out of the way, Jake! Here's Hunt. Jake. Last play again for them now. The Not kick late. downfield Jake off the boot Cameron. of Cleary. Well taken. Safely taken by Toho on that far side. Yeah, a good set by Australia. And then again, Cleary's always there. Just watch, you know, no time whatsoever for the back three to get any yardage. You know, it's just a precise kick, great chase. They, they played a game of offloads, have Samoa, in this tournament, Brian. They've 74 more than anybody else. Is that what they look to again here today? I reckon they'll look to get into the game first. I think they need to go set for set. They've got a whole lot of players that are used to going for set for set in an intense competition. And then I think we'll find that offload game. What a kick this is. Terrific kick. Terrific kick. And a brilliant saving dive. From James Tedesco. Fantastic by Tedesco. Early kick from the Samoans. Relieved the pressure from the Australian defensive line. Nearly a brilliant, brilliant kick. A watchful back play by Tedesco. Would have been a 40 20, would have given Samoa a chance to tap and go and have a go at the line. But have a look at this. Wow. Oh, he's, oh, he's in touch. He's, he's in touch. touch. He's got it wrong. That should have been a 40 20. Error by the officials. First talking point of a day that will provide so many talking points without any doubt. Well, Here's Tedesco. Just a small example there from James Tedesco of where Australia think they've got the advantage on this Samoan team. They're going to plough in and around the middle with their quick people and then come away and come back at the middle to try and exploit some spaces. Good set again by Samoa. Again having to kick from very deep. Cleary puts it up in the air. Underneath it is May. Safely gathered in, and Samoa start there. I think they will. They will start, you know, the off-road game there. But as Brian said, you know, very calculated, patient start. But they have to be careful. You just can't give offloads away or the intercept or a little knock-on. They've got to be careful not to give Australia field position by offloads. They're starting really confidently. And I'll tell you what, Suwali is getting his hands on the ball. Plenty in these early stages, isn't he? He's up for this. 
and he needs to be at his very best here today from Samoa's point of view. Well, he got a massage there that he hadn't paid for, so they paid particular attention to him with the green and goals. Moving wide. It shouldn't be over the Samoan players. As you say, they play with and against you know, the Australians week in, week out, and they know their strengths and weaknesses and know what they have to do. Luai with a kick. High and hanging, and the challenge is on. Mitchell doesn't get it. Play on, but it's still the sixth tackle, so Samara desperate to keep it alive. There we go. Now it's moved towards that stretch right hand side. Milford gets it away. Crichton with a kick over the top. What to do for Valentine Holmes, who just watches it out of play. Yeah. It'll be a tap back on the 20 and a seven tackle restart for Australia. Again, you know, the game loose, it breaks up a little bit, loose play, the offloads. But unfortunately, the in goal here is very, very small here. And, you know, it's got to be precise kicks, very well measured kicks. Very small in goal. I just want to remind everybody that Samoa can go set for set with Australia. Yes. If you look at the, you know, forwards, they are massive. And they can go head to head with anyone in the world. Hunt towards his right hand side, and Martin with a thunderous effort that takes Australia just about inside Samoan territory. That looked like a forward pass, and that's because it was a forward pass. Untidy from Australia. Two things. Liam Martin's been outstanding in this World Cup and we're seeing the danger that he, he promotes in and around the middle. But here's the forward pass, clearly well forward and a break for Samoa there. Yeah, I think, you know, there should have been a 40-20, they should have had the ball back in an attacking position. Though sometimes you've got to go with the referee and you get some lucky break sometimes. Lock him in, James. Not early back, this way. Ashley Klein just making sure that the defence is marshalled and he's back where it needs to be as Luai puts that ball into the scrum and here comes an attacking effort now Toho from Samoa with that first inside the Australian half so a good position to build here from Samoa's point of view Sua inching closer into dummy half Harris Tavita who's retiring from the game after this match at the age of 23 he might be back as we were saying last week, he wants to go on his travels and do That's some right, writing. Well, what a way to go That's out three. if he can help inspire his side to victory okay, here today. Milford, a couple of Stand. plays to go here. Anyway, go Tackles in the back for Samoa. Paolo, now it comes back with Lingi Sao, and Sao is trying to hold off those rugged Australian defenders. And he gets the offload away. That's the first of the day, that offload. They'll feed off those. Harris Tavita's going no further. Yeah, Jane, Jane. So Lingi Sauer at dummy half. Offside down, sure. Luai. This is the sixth tackle. Milford helps it on its way. Sua. Little flick pass back to Crichton, who steps into a perceived hole. They keep it alive briskly, but Sua Lee is swamped by Australian defenders. Well, it's, it's all extra tackles for the Australians to do on their own line, and that will take a little bit of juice out of their tank, and they need some juice taken out of their tank because of the way they play football. So we're clearly seeing there that last tackles are going to chance around some over. They're going to try and find a space. Maybe Crichton could have found a kick play there that had been to their advantage. Australia have it back, but working from deep here. Toughest game of the competition so far, without doubt. Their semi-final win against New Zealand what a game. last week. It was a hell of a game if you didn't see it. I know you did, Jiffy. It was um, some spectacle. But Unbelievable. Is, is, there, is there a legacy from that, or is this Australia and they simply go again? No, there's no legacy. They played just as hard this week as they did last week. They played against Scotland. They beat Scotland 80 points. They had the same intensity for 80 right minutes. Him. They were absolutely oh, ruthless, yeah. and they will be the same Thank today. You. And that's what Samoa have to match. Clear it, smuggling it out to this right-hand side, but Last tackle. going no further. Damn. And Australia right inside the Samoan half, but they've run out of tackles, so they have to kick again from Cleary. Spiraling up in the air, Jay. that ball's all Jay. over the place. Nobody knows where that's going. Australia benefit, try to keep it alive here, but there's a little bit of desperation. But the duck and dive from Hunt, and Hunt throws it away, trying to keep it alive. And Teho has it, and Samoa have it. Well, it was great kick pressure on Cleary from the Samoans. There's a danger if you let that ball bounce, because that can go one way or the other. It worked out for Samoa there. 
But that's a risky strategy if you're going to let the ball bounce. Yeah, you cannot do that. Uh, you know, the back three of Samoa. I've, I've let that happen on, on numerous occasions in this tournament. They've only got to watch, you know, what the Australians did in the kick chase against us, against New Zealand. Brilliant try, Ado Carr. You have to communicate, Dave, in the back three. They have to talk, make sure they take the, the right guy takes the high ball, cannot leave it bounce. Driven forward by Paolo. Into dummy half. Moves Harris to Vita. Suolihi. Putting on the pace, putting on the power, testing that Australian defence. Unbelievable. Harris to Vita down that right hand side. Now it's with Sua. Australia hanging on at the moment, but they're very good at this, defending their line. But they are being tested at the moment. Harris to Vita spins it back. Here comes Luai with a high hanging kick, too far, too far, and an easy take for Jack Whiten, and Watch he out. races it back to the 20, and he can carry on running, and he can put lateral Mitchell of Valentine Holmes into a bit of space oh, here, tackle. but back comes the tackle of May, but up gets Holmes and carries on, and Australia in the blink of the eye have gone from defending their line to attacking their opponent's line, with some real threat as well here, Munster doubles back to where he came from look at where they are best position of the game so far zero tackle as well Tedesco at from dummy half good offload from him kept alive Cleary with a step he can't keep it up so Australia start there it's back with Munster Munster flicks it back and well, they just ran into trouble there yeah. with a possible obstruction. He had to give himself up, Tedesco. He's been busy, though, Tedesco, so far up the middle, tightening the forwards out. Hunts to Cleary, Cleary, as they look to express themselves on this right-hand side with Yo. Isaac Yo gets up and plays the ball, and it's picked up very quickly and very smartly. Whiten just pulled down, just short. Last play, Hunt with a kick into the end goal. Luai drops on it. It's going to be a drop out underneath the stick. So let's see what Kevin Brown has, has got to say down on the sidelines. Kev, what are you spotting? Thanks, Woods. Oh. Yeah, just spotted. I've just been watching Nathan Cleary quite closely. Well, we can't and... hear Kev at the moment. I tell you, that's the, you know, the one misjudged kick, and that's how they quickly they respond. You know, they get the ball to the 20, and now look where they end up. You know, that's what they, you cannot switch off against this Australian side, and that's what happened to Samoa. A poor kick, poor defensive line, and look where they are. Gonna give them a big tick, do you feel, on the back that yes, they got back? They scrambled for six because they had a lot of threats going at them there. It was clear down the field with Valentine Holmes and they got back and defended their line. They've got to do it again now. Well, it's another wave of attack that's coming their way and Regan oh. Campbell-Gillard, who carries that ball with right so much through. intent. Stay Junior Paolo, teammate right and right friends right. off the field, but very much direct enemies today. Trebojevic stepping in. Hunt Dominant. waits oh, go, to deliver. Here's Cleary, puts it back, little dummy thrown by Munster, not taken by that Samoan defence, who are backing up at the moment. Hunt goes out of dummy half, and Hunt again just sees a half gap and tries to puncture that, but he's a yard or two short, Cleary skips it back. Across the line again, good read from Samoa. Great read, Great read. Brilliant Great effort from Stephen Crichton to get in and make that tackle. And now the last play. Clearly with the ball away, terrific stuff, and a reach for the corner. They have the first try. Latrell Mitchell over to score. Australia, the first to cross. Yeah, it's a brilliant try. They work the left hand side. Crichton is a great spot and a read in the defensive line. But a lovely late, late delivery to this man. And that close to the line, he is very, very difficult to stop. Well, you're right, Jonathan. He's too big and he's uh, from that kind of distance, eight metres out. You're not going to stop Latrell Mitchell on the fly. And he was on the bounce on the fly and hitting the hole. Field position gained. Had to, had to get the ball dead and go for six more players for Australia. Luai, no other choice. And bit yeah. of a just watch, just watch Milford, yeah. He buys, he bites in Milford, just watch him, he'll come in. Number seven, he'd get caught though, clearly delayed the pass, thought it was a kick. He stepped inside and left the gap for this guy. And that is one thing you cannot do. One of the best centers in the world. You don't give him that opportunity. Milford had to stay with him. 
but it's a lovely, lovely play by Cleary. Yeah. He's, you know, he threatens a dummy little kick. Milford comes in, late pass, beautiful try. Well, Big Miles a happy man. Just a little bit of uh, reflection there for the Samoan players who started so well, but... But again, the one misjudged kick. That's what happened, one misjudged kick, quick tap, all of a sudden, 80 metres, and they're under the pressure. Repeat set as well, just brilliant, basic rugby league. They've been breaking records all through this tournament, Australia. Uh, Nathan Cleary, leading point scorer so far, this would be his 30th of the World Cup, if he could get it over, but he's not, he's, he's a long way short, actually. He's a long way short, so it remains at four points to nil. Well, Milford was a player I just couldn't quite identify. Clearly yeah. picks him out, and he needs to stay on Mitchell and at least be a spark in his wheels so yeah. he can get some help, help there in relation to defending. So it's one poor read from Milford, and he also ex exploit that. Yeah, it's a, it's a dummy, it's a show and a dummy kick, really. I don't know what he's trying to do, come in and, and maybe smother the kick, but you have to stay on your man. A lovely short ball by Cleary. Suhalihi with the restart, Australia back in possession, wait for this carry, wait for this carry, and in it's taken again. Kev Brown, I think we can hear from you now, what, what have you seen so far? Thanks Woodsy, yeah really, really busy start, but just watching Nathan Cleary quite close, and he's screaming at his forwards and demanding shape, he knows that these big Samoan forwards are trying to get side by side and be aggressive, and he's saying don't go on your own, get shape and be tempo. Tavojevic up to play, thanks Kev. Here he is again, Tedesco so busy isn't he, so busy Dave, you know, he's running up, making those darting runs, taking energy from the big forwards. Hunt is looking for a bit of uh, pressure on Samoa by putting that ball down there and ensuring the chase is good and it means that Samoa have to start from there and this is something we've seen from generation after generation of Australian teams. It's a brilliant example of what Australia do so well and why they're so processed. They're prepared to kick the ball a hundred times as long as it lands a metre from the try line, five metres from the sideline, so they can keep you at your end of the field and depress you. A little bit untidy, but uh, referee's going to allow Samoa to get the ball back here. Tim Lafay to play. They're lucky to get that, they could have been a knock on. I think referee called held. Yeah. Here's Harris to beat her. 17 minutes have gone in a flash. Harris to beat her across again. It's going to be Luai who gets that kick away. Big left foot from him, right down the middle, so he hits a bit of grass, and then you never know what's going to happen with a bounce. It makes it a little more difficult for Valentine Holmes, but he's able to bring it back. Tedesco's with him as well. Valentine Holmes will test that defence on his own, but Lingi Sao there to make the tackle. Adokar, Josh Adokar with the break, and he looks on the inside, and there's Tedesco. James Tedesco to score underneath the sticks, but what about the Fox? What about Josh Adokar? That burst of brilliance, that explosion of energy, the speed, the pace, and the rest is a little bit of Tedesco class, and Australia have their second. And again, the back three do such a good job, don't they? You know, Tedesco, Holmes and Adokar. Holmes was the previous run, running at the big forwards. Adokar comes in, they stay off him, just too quick, just a mismatch. Look, dog go. leg defence, he cuts back behind the, the play of the ball. Tedesco's on his shoulder. That's poor defensive work from Samoa, really. Too easy for the Australians, that. But well, they're clocked off around the run, yep. and we see the close up here. He's got too much leg speed, any space, and he's through three or four players. That's instantly you turn off against the green and gold. Tedesco does well to keep up with that old car, but he's there under the sticks as any good fullback should be. Well, it shocks them, or it shouldn't have surprised them. Fastest man in the NRL, that car. He's speed, pure speed. Yeah, they've been under the cosh, haven't they? Some more started well, put them under pressure. This is how they've responded. And Cleary, with a much more simple kick this time, should take Australia into double figures. Well, in five minutes, they've gone from being under the cosh to being in command. 
leading now by 10 points to nil. Well, we see it again, and he's just sees any space. They've blocked on in and around the middle and just can't get to him. He's too quick, too fast with Tedesco on his shoulder. And this is what the Australians do. This game has changed on the back of one poor kick from Samoa. Yep. One poor kick, we see Wayne and we see Holmes, Van Zyl fly up the middle and all of a sudden it's all Australia again. Yeah, that was a momentum, momentum switch, wasn't it? One poor kick, they switch on. But as Brian said earlier, it's the basic stuff they do well. It's the taking the ball, carrying the ball, a beautiful kick and a great chase. Test now is of Samoa's temperament, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, even Everybody this early in the game, the That's next right. score Jayden. is very, Wait, very important. Wait. Very important. They need to get something back oh. into this. Big hit. Oh, that's a test of their temperament. You felt, you felt that one, was he? Yeah, Shoulder of Kafuzi there. <coughs> Just stopping Travojevic in his tracks. But Australia again are threatening to burst and break. Here's Hunt on that Bruce left hand Steven. side. Crichton searches him out and pins Steven. him down. But Australia go again. They do it with so much pace and intensity, don't they? It's like perpetual motion. Well, we've spoken really at length about the physicality of the Samoans. The Australians are really physical, strong in the hips, are able to get to the side of defenders with agility and break through tackles. Every carry is a test for the Samoan defence. Here's the last play in the set. Cleary puts it high in the air to her underneath it. Oh, he's lost it. It's going to be another set here for Australia. Scored. They oh, picked up and carried on, luckily, I don't yeah, care, but he's, uh, the referee's already blown the whistle, no advantage. And again, that is just Sam, nothing special, good hard yard, it? give it to the half-back, it's a beautiful oh, kick, God. Samoa oh, make a mistake, <laughs> pressure is back on Samoa. Well, here's the challenge, is it legal? Aye. Is there a captain's challenge here? He should be, actually, doesn't he? He takes his legs away, I think. Ado Car doesn't move, though, does he? No. No, I don't. No. Scrummed out. So Australia's well, head and feet. If you're not competing for the ball, you've got to try and get up to the way, haven't you? That's what I'm thinking. And, and just to confirm, it, just to confirm it wasn't a captain's right. challenge, no, by the no. way. Here comes Hunt on that left hand side. Maybe you should have been there. Munster looking back towards the middle. Samoa's defence regroups. It, 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 they look collectively like a boxer on the ropes at the moment, Samoa. Australia keep reining in the punches and keep driving it in as well. And getting closer and closer with every carry. Hunt prepared again at dummy half, whips it back to Cleary. Cleary, and just a body sway to allow that ball to fly out to Tedesco. That's a very good read. Good read definitely. Kafusi gets to him. Monster just, just backed away from that. Cleary again. There is, settle under the sticks. Organise, see which side they go. Hunt with Munster. Munster's pass right to Martin. Martin sandwiched down by three Samoan defenders. One play in the set. It's back with Cleary. Cleary with a clever little kick. Well, I say a clever little kick. It was actually, well, well, it's gone out of play off a Samoan hand. So many things about that. I think everybody was expecting the wide kick. He went short and he got that, that backspin on that which turned it into a, a real problem for Samoa. I thought he was behind the in-goal line there, so I'd like to see that again to see if he was out of the, out the pitch. I think the markings are a little confusing, aren't they, there? Because we've got a football pitch marking, and then the, uh, the in-goal rugby league marking is behind it. Anyway, that's all academic. Oh. There's nothing Bring academic down, about Campbell right. Gillard when he runs it in like that. <laughs> Australia poised again. Hunt. Trebojevic along oh. the line. Munster quick hands. Here's Mitchell. Gets it away. Josh Adokar looking for a record. Still not stopped. He is now. Eventually. Got him on the outside there, didn't he? Crichton back towards the middle. It's with Hunt, a oh, little juggle from Tedesco. Tedesco cuts back, looking for a pathway. Tedesco still going. They can't drag him down, he's still bouncing up. Boy, he took some stopping. Luai in the end. It's a man who helped put him down. Hunt switches to that left-hand side. Cleary will try to take them on. Grabbed out and pulled down by Sua. Cleary up to play. Mitchell out of dummy half. Bouncing into defenders, bouncing through defenders, and he's just knocked it on over the line. Wow. Oof. 
What a big moment that was. The sigh of relief in that Samoan defence there, because he was going, and he was still going, and he was pumping, and he just wanted an opportunity to put the ball down. His legs are still pumping. Look at him. Oh, oh yeah, what clearly. an effort. Clearly. So it, it does remind me a lot of Mal Meninga. <laughs> Justified his number eight jumper yeah, there. Just, you know, he is so, so powerful. And a, to, to his standards, he has had a quiet World Cup, hasn't he? He is a superstar. And if you're kind of vaguely familiar with rugby league and you can't work out these Australian numbers, then you're not alone. No. Oh. They've, they've not gone with the traditional, he's going to be the fullback, so he'll play number one, although Tedesco is the fullback yeah, and he plays yeah. number one, but all the other numbers are based on the number of caps and appearances that these Australian players have made. It's nothing to do which, with whatever position they might be playing in. Which I think is absolutely ridiculous. And when you're top dog, you can do what you want. In Australia, in the NRL, they, they, they play 1-13 to 13 every yep. game, don't they? It doesn't matter who's playing, they play 1-13. to 13. Australia not given the option at this World Cup to do that, so Mal Meninga I'm, I'm sure has that decided he'd go with this I'm sure situation that, I'm instead. I'm sure they've wanted to play you know, with the likes of Brett Kenny and Wally Lewis and follow and have the legacy that those players have left in that six jersey, you know? To play in that six jersey for Australia. Luai puts it high. Taken safely by Valentine Holmes. And for the first time in a long time, Australia starting from deep inside their own half. Whiten. <coughs> Munster out of dummy half. Here comes Carrigan, who's on from the interchange bench. The Brisbane forward. Hunt, the general, just getting things moving again. Munster kicks for the corner. Just again looking to put Samoa in a position where they... Whoa, it's just hit the uh, the corner flag, so it's a tap back on the 20. Yep. So it's not as accurate as he would have wanted. It's given Samoa a bit of a get out of a, a jail card here because tap restart gives them seven tackles. And that's unusual for Australia. We've seen over the years Cameron Smith, legend oh, of a player, winding themselves up here. Crichton again, again a little bit of an offload there, yep. a little bit of a gamble taken, controlled gamble. So Ho fires it in. They need a spark now some more, they were in a stranglehold. They needed to take one of those early yeah. chances, didn't they? Yes. Martin Tapao is on the field, another from the bench. Chanel Harris-Tavita back to the middle, Papali is there as well. So they've rolled on some of those who started in the wings to try to get the drama working back in their favour. Step by Luai. Here's Papalihi again. Trying to get the arms free, the big Canberra forward. 30 metres out, Harris Tavita. Luai shifts it on to Tapa. Just takes it in. Shoulders first. Australia put him down. Last play in the set. Luai with a kick high and hanging. There's plenty of green and goal, but what a take that was. And what an interception. Yeah. From Ado Carr, but he has given back to six. Come on, another set. That was a and try. And he not got a hand on that. Oh, yep, it would have been a try. Easy try saver. But they got six more goes to try and pierce the line. And Paolo will go the muscular route and the offload. And Chanel Harris to meet us over the line. Oh, he's held up there, I think. Look at that. Yeah, I think you can safely say he's held safely up there. Say he's held up. I couldn't see behind the post, but I. I had a funny feeling they dropped him up. So we're going to get right back on with it with a play the ball. What's this? What the this kick. is a try all the time. Crime finds Toro and he's That's in. Brilliant. But here we go. Samoa going again now with the play the ball. The ball shifted to this left hand side, driven in by Paolo. Paolo offloads. Back it comes to Luai. Now it's Suhalihi. Suhalihi with a step. Well taken by the shoulder of Crichton. Great take by Suhalihi. But up and under. Harris Tavita. Papalihi again. Only one way into second gear and driving through. Tractor tyres were on, but Australia's defending is good. It's Luai. Milford. Oh, he's lost it. I tell Straight you what, into the hands of Jack White, and it could have been worse. White yeah. could have kept his feet and gone the distance. But they had the numbers on them then. They created the, uh, the extra man there. Unfortunately, just couldn't take the ball. Milford. Just watch one comes in, just couldn't take it. Oh, another, another set. 
Harry Grant's on the field as well, so there'll be plenty of running from Dunny Half with yeah. him this, now on the pitch. This is where Australia are the most dangerous. You have a, an attacking set from Samoa where in all tits, but they've got to get over, but the desperation from the Australian team to keep them out, and then the play there from Milford. And wow, 29 minutes gone, you just got to be careful now against this Aussie team when you haven't executed yourself. Carrigan does well to get up quickly and play that ball. Grant goes out of dummy half. Munster sees the advancing Samoan line, so instead of passing, comes back the other way. And Tessa, their defensive resolve. A pickup from Grant. It's with Cleary. Cleary. Wished he passed it to power the tackle. One play to go. There are, he's on the ground, watch out. Grant picks up, tries to make the numbers, and they are very close. Liam Martin's claiming this. The referee is going to put the square in the air here, Ashley Klein. But there's a lot of confidence in the body language of Liam Martin. Let's hear from the video referee, Chris Kendall. OK, video referee to match director. Tackle five, we have no try. Can we check all available angles on the ground in place? Does it maintain possession? Or is the ball lost? This is exactly the angle I'll need. Got the ball in his right arm. Can we just go 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 back on that? Can I just just roll it roll it back and just keep going back. Keep going back. Oh just make sure that Okay, his right arm is on the ball. It's still on the ball. And the ball is grounded. I'm happy I've viewed all available angles and I've made my decision. Player of the match of the semi-final is in the team of the tournament and that's one of the reasons why. The sheer determination to get over there. Australia have their third try. Well, it's come from a Samoan. Poor last play. They don't hand over the ball the way they want to. They can't keep Australia at that end. I said they were dangerous in the set. Proceeding and a mistake from Samoa, irrespective of where they're on the field, they run out of thumb half. They get the ball to this block, and it's just too too strong, too good near the line. <laughs> I see impact again. You know, Grant comes on. This is it. Look, they lose a ball here, it's gone. And from that mistake, it's another try. So so clinical. Just watch Grant. Takes it, creates a three on two, but they try and come in to spoil. Well, there's still a lot of work yeah, to do here to from go. Martin. But again, Grant created a three-on-two. He runs between the players. It's a great finish. It's so, so clinical. The minute you think you're getting close to them, they just get you the next play or the next play. The, that's why it's all about concentration against the Australians. You have to play for every second of every set. And, and you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to score. You just, it's, it's like a game of chess. You just play, you six, you, then you get your kick in, you, you territory, then they kick back, then you go patient. Patience, composure. Clear his kick. He's not on his boots on today for kicking. He's put it well wide. But at 14 points to nil, that is not too concerning at the moment for Again, these kangaroos. Guy on the floor, he comes blind, gets a three on two. Martin is just too big and too strong. Isolates the centre. One of those is up against many of his teammates as well. The uh, Penrith forward Liam Martin. What a season that club had for a second year running back to back grand finals for Penrith in the NRL and uh, producing a lot of players involved in this tournament today. And Australia, even though they come from deep, still look full of purpose. Murray gets up and plays. Grant out of dummy half, a push again. Johnson 15 short of the halfway line. Grant out of dummy half. Tucked up and taken forward by Zayo. Grant's got time to look around. And pawing the ground to the left of him. Again, the understanding of where that pass was intended for. Five gone. Here comes the last. Grant, Cleary, 
a little bit of pressure, but he's still able to get a very good kick away again. Toho will catch it. The green and goals are there in numbers, so that's where they will start Samoa. And Kev Brown, what do you say? Yeah, just a, a big difference, a clear difference, what I can see in these two sides at the minute is, is the unselfish and energy that the Australians are putting in off the ball. Samoa are running hard and the tackling hard, but they're doing it in, in ones and twos. Australia, everything they do is fast and as a team. Yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? They, they, they look like a... This is a team that hadn't really played together uh, as Australia before this World Cup tournament. They, they needed bedding in, bedding in, but they have bedded in. They just look like a, a single unit, don't well, they? The, the game against Scotland, when they won by 80 points, they were absolutely brilliant, you know, and it wasn't sometimes, you know, the opposition drag you down. And Scotland played, you know, very well, but it was so good, so clinical, so intense. Samoa need to find an answer. Well, they've got Tiny May on this left-hand side. Here's Luai! But look at that defence. Tedesco. He's a star with ball in hand. But he's pretty smart in defensive duties as well. And that's the bit that we don't talk about Australia. They do not want their line breached. They will work. Kevin Brown mentions the team aspect of what they do, do, what they do and how they go about their business. And one of their primary concerns, one of their primary objectives are we're going to defend as well as we possibly can. Tedesco again there with the play. Unbelievable sideline tackle on Luai. But some more chance in their arm. Australia 98 carries, 21 tackle busts so far. Tells you a lot about the... Uh, the way this game is going, the scoreline at the top probably tells you the ultimate reason where the game is going. Australia back towards the halfway line. Those opening minutes, they looked a little nervous, maybe. Looked a little challenged. But ever since, they have bossed this contest. We're into the final five minutes. Grant out of dummy half again. Lovely hands. Back to Tedesco on the inside. From Yo, Tedesco refuses to be tackled here. Well, he's You're going to have to work hard if you want to stop him. He's beaten the same block four times. Yeah. Grant spins it right, clearing. Munster kicks on and chases. Sueli, he's there to take it. Took a, a hit on the head. Yeah, very brave. Had to go down, commit himself to that ball. But again, if Cleary isn't there to put the kick in, who is? His partner, Munster, total control, in harmony all the time. And look where they're, you know, giving the ball away once again. They've got to work so hard. Harris Tavita, hands on hips. Toho carries it and carries it well. A little challenge on that Australian line, but they do keep a hold. Luai, and they have a few numbers on this left-hand side, or at least they did until the Australians came flooding over and cut down all the options. Luai to Milford, Milford oh. kicks, pressure coming from Grant, but the kick to Adokar, here's a bit of danger, Josh Adokar, stepping, left foot, right foot, threatens to fly through. You, you can't give him a one-on-one -on, -one on the kick chase, so he'll just run past you. Holmes, Valentine Holmes, his World Cup try scoring world record that's up for grabs, he got... 12 tries at the last World Cup in 2017. What Ado Car's got nine at this tournament so far. 12 at this tournament, I should say so far. There's a half burst from Cleary. Australia again, moving into that menacing position. Grant, Murray, cutting back. Carrigan rather cutting back. 10 meters out. Grant again picks up and goes and flicks it back to Munster, and Munster with a short ball. This time, oh, Martin stopped. Good tackle. And that's the sixth. You know, as, as Kevin said on, on the touchline there, you're clearly always threatening, you know, whether it's giving the ball, he takes the ball to the line, he takes them on if they get lazy and fall off him. You know, he controls the kicking game. Luai, Papalihi, that's a good player. And he makes it look easy. It makes it look easy as well, clearly. Harris Tavita turns Toho in the middle, looking for a bit of the action, looking to just um, 
take some of the weary, weary ball-carrying duties away from his oh. forwards, but it's maybe his wearying body that's uh, let his side down there. He spilt that. Australia will get the scrum down. The last 20 minutes, Brian, you know, they've, they have found it very difficult to get out to their own half, haven't they? I think they've, you know, they've squandered, they try to offload because the Australian defence is so, so solid. They've struggled and now they're under pressure once again. It's big set just before half time. Sometimes you have to go set for set and it doesn't look pretty. You've got to keep hanging and keeping in the game. That's test rugby, isn't it? That is test rugby. Two minutes to half time. Key moment in the game, maybe here, as Munster tries to step away from the oncoming defender. And if I make contact. It's with Tedesco. Tedesco short ball. Martin again. Martin scoops it up. Whiten comes dodging and weaving back towards the middle, but then he's forced wide again. Grant five meters out. Australia have looked good. A little more polish maybe here. Out it goes to Munster. Munster away to Mitchell. Mitchell keeping one leg. The other one taken by the defender, but he can't keep his balance. So the option for the offload disappears for the moment. Adokar spins it back towards Cleary, and Cleary up to the line, trying to make mischief. Pops it back instead for Yo. They're starting to work together now, aren't they? Yo and Cleary, club mate. Here's Grant. Tedesco with a big right foot step, urging himself towards that line, just held up. One play, Grant with the dummy, and then with the pass, and Yo. Luai diving back to rescue the situation for Samoa. Well, Luai and all the Samoans are desperate here, and they are defending really, really well, being challenged all the time. Oh, look at this, look here, at here. this from Australia, forcing that drop out. Sheer weight of numbers, determination. Samoa look defeated at the moment. They look yeah. weary at the they, moment. They want the half-time Huda to come now. They are under the cosh. The last 20 minutes of this first half, they have been battered. Well, I think they are going to get the hard time hooter before they drop out here. The shot clock's on, but they are within the shot clock range so that they can take as much time as possible. There we go. Hooter sounds. And Samoa look a bedraggled bunch. They are being beaten by a class outfit. Absolutely clinical. Absolutely clinical. Half time. Australia leading by 14 points to nil. Yeah, clinical is uh, what Jonathan and the rest of the commentary team said. You could say ruthless as well, couldn't you? Robbie, when they get the opportunities, they take them. They do. They create their own opportunities. They build pressure. Have some incredible... Out of the tunnel at the moment.
applauding Samoa as they come out and him and his party. He's uh, just shaking the hands of the referee, Ashley Klein, as well. I don't know whether you saw that. Uh, but uh, the referees are back out. Both teams are back out. We're 40 minutes away from finding out uh, the champions of the Men's Rugby League World Cup. Stop laughing, Wilkin. You are my friend and I love you, but stop laughing. <laughs> that boot, man, Back to Brian, Jonathan and Dave. Oh, we've got an occasion on our hands here, haven't we? Fantastic. The noise inside this stadium is just terrific. The energy inside this stadium is fantastic. Kevin Sinfield and his efforts have really lifted it, but it didn't need lifting much, actually, because even before that, it was wonderful. And everybody, the vast majority, have cheered Samoa to the rafters as they come on for this second half. But boy, if, uh, if Kevin Sinfield's had a tough seven days, and he has, well, Samoa have got a very tough 40 minutes here if they're going to get back into this World Cup final. Australia on the verge of making it a 12th Help! World Help! Cup Help! Wait! final Wait! win. And Samoa will have to start well as Tapao drives it in. Well, this is a super Take occasion, as you quite rightly pointed oh, out, yeah. Dave. But to make it even more super and a little bit more exciting, I think Samoa have to score first in this second half. Stand I'll certainly up, get down to the end of the field with that expansion that they're trying, but remember the clinical nature of what Australia do to you. It's really, really highly skilled. It would be too unfair on the Australians to say that they're not highly skilled in the way that they execute. Oh, they can't afford moments like that. They simply can't oh. afford moments like that. They've just given Australia a great start to this second yeah, half. Yeah, they needed to finish that first set, get a good kick in and have some time in the opposition half. Unfortunately, it's another error. Over here. It's an unforced error. Just can't do it against this side. Gives them a little bit of a leg up now. The first real attacking opportunity, only a minute into the second half. Lock him in, guys, let's go. Hit him. Hands on hips already. Let's go. From Anthony Milford. It's Ado Carr who feeds the scrum. Australia going out to that right hand side with Munster. Munster dragged down, but here's the platform. And these are the magicians. What can they make of this position? Bit of muscle to try and get them a little closer. Just get out! Grant has got four to his left, the rest to his right. That's the way they go. Here's Carrigan. Carrigan one-legged, hopping. Grant again. Samoa need to be watertight in his next couple of plays. Cleary offers it back to Desco. Has that ball high and knock on. Yeah, he just, just bobbled and hit a defender. Just lost control. Well, well done, Samoa. Back in control of their own destiny. They're going to get the ball back on their 20 metres. Get it down to the other end of the field, Samoa. And let's see what you got in the tank. Here's the bobble from Tedesco Ooh, in the tackle. Tough call, if you ask call. me. Tough call. I think a tighter situation. He might have gone for a captain's yeah, challenge yeah. there, mind you. Let's let's go down to the touchline. Uh, Damien, you've got you've got half-time news. Well, the good news is Junior Polo is back uh, for Samoa. He's passed his head injury assessment. Had a, a quick word with Lee Radford, the assistant coach of Samoa. Uh, acknowledge that Australia do so well uh, what they do well uh, and we need to fight for the football and see what we can do with it in the second half the message from Mal Meninga maintain the pressure defend like we have been and the World Cup is ours can't argue with that can no, you? I, I just yeah, think assessment. yeah I know I just think they need to spend some time in the Australian half now they haven't been there for a long long time they need to get you know keep Finish a set, try and get repeat sets, but try and maintain some pressure on the Australian defensive line in their own 20, maybe. Those were the Gillaroos we just saw who won the uh, Women's World Cup earlier today on this stage. You might have seen it here on the BBC, but if you didn't, they were very impressive in their victory against New Zealand. So part one of what they hope will be an Australian double. Samoa keeping it alive, that's good, quick hands, and here comes Tiny May on that left-hand side, but again... Look at the response from the green and gold. Look they just buffet those ambitions into touch. Look who's there, two forwards. Two forwards on a winger. Well, it's it, exciting because they create the number. Get on the outside. May for me has to come in here. Try and stay on the field. And... Tough job to stay in the field there, bro. You have to be honest. Smash. Happy grants to be made. Yeah. 
Martin's there again. You've got to admire Australia, haven't you? I mean, there is a kind of a, an ABA opinion in, in the majority in this stadium. Anybody but Australia. But you have to admire them and how they play this game. They are wonderful. They just do all the basics so well. Here's Grant. Take a good team to beat them. Samoa going to try. Junior Paolo, the captain, trying to lead his team there with example. Here's Mitchell. Backing in, dragged to the ground, slowed down by those Samoan defenders. Grant picks up again and has a little totter forward. This is Carrigan. Almost on the halfway line. Grant stands and waits. Samoa holding on for as long as they can. Allowing the, uh, the rest of the team to get some air back in the lungs. A lovely little dabbled kick which uh, Suili hears across quick and smartly, and he tries to brush off the first yeah, yeah, defender, yeah. but look at that from Cleary, straight in there. Ambitions thwarted right at the start, as Samoa try to bring it back. Well, it's a team ethic that keeps Australia on top right throughout the 80 yeah. minutes. It's not one player, it's not two players. Even on the kick chase, we saw an example of the five green jumpers. Not enabling the Samoans to get out of their own half easily. And also, Isaiah Yeo has been a good foil as well today. He's, he's had his hands on the ball a lot, taking a little pressure you know, off the half backs as well for them to organise the next play. Lingy Sauer stopped, still five short of the halfway line and on the last. So Milford puts the kick hopefully downfield. Tedesco underneath it, catches safely. Already at the 20, zooming back towards the 30, trying to go high. Still going. Referee says he was tattled. It's a really good carry from the fullback again, that wasn't it? He's had a good game, Tedesco. Yeah, he's had, he had a very good game. Stand now, you dropped. Had a car latest to be impeded by the oh, Samoan oh. defenders. Angus Crichton crashes in and crashes out again, and the ball has gone through the hands of Valentine Holmes. Well, there's concern for a Samoan player here. I think he's knocked himself out, yeah. He came in for the big hit, and you just run on to an elbow. No fault to the Australian. I think you're just looking at, you know, defending himself. But he just caught him. Just watch now. Is it Luan? Yeah, watch him. He picks the ball and goes quite and goes up. Oh, that's Tavita Harris, isn't it? Yeah. Harris Tavita, yeah, who's um, still prone. Well, well having seen it again, is that still an, an accidental contact in your verdict, or is there a case to be answered there? I'd like to see it again. Yeah, to see it here. again. Just watch. Look. This yes. is a knock. You, get, you might get frustrated because it's a it's a poor pass to Vardenhoff. This is it. He picks the ball up. Tavita comes in for the big hit. He just defends himself, I think. What do you think? With his elbow <laughs> at the head. Well, no. What? That's defence? Yeah, it could be yellow. Yeah. <laughs> could I was be yellow. trying my best not to say anything and help me out there, Jonathan. I know, I know. Could be yellow. I think he's whacked him round the head. That's might, ten minutes. Might in the be bit. red. Do you reckon? Maybe red. It's a test it? match. It's a test match, and <laughs> different uh, rules apply. Yeah, sometimes. I, I, I think he's got. A, I think he's got to play at real normal speed as well. He's coming in for the big well, hit. It's head contact, so it's at least ten yeah, minutes yeah, for me. Yeah, at least yeah. I don't think it's a send-off, because he is defending himself, as you quite rightly put out, Jonathan. Well, he's in trouble here. The referee's going to have a word. He'll wait until Harris Tavita has had full attention before taking the next step. I remember Wally Lewis, who once broke Brian Noble's jaw, telling us that his best mate in rugby league was his elbow. Good player was Wally but he knew he had to defend himself, but there was an elbow that was less than defensive. Malmaning a concern here, but his side could be reduced. Yeah, I think he is Klein is taking all the time in the world because they want to make absolutely sure that Chanel harris Tavita is OK. He's going off the field here, no doubts whatsoever. That's the end of his World Cup final, absolutely yeah. no doubts, with a new head injury assessment that we've had in the last few years. As soon as he's not, uh, he's not coming back. And that's a big blow for Samara as well, isn't it? Because they've had their problems in that dummy half position. And your Levi's had to go home. New Brown got a head injury last week, couldn't play. He's he's almost third choice, isn't he? That'd be a big blow. Angus! Angus! 
Here we go. Angus Crichton. Ten minutes. Put it on report. Sends into the sending. Australia down to 12 men until the 56th minute. The question is, can Samaya take advantage of that now? Well, they're losing a little bit of fluidity, Deb. You're quite right to point out that Savita Harris is at nine. He's one of the pivots, understands where the player's going to. Who jumps into that spot now? So it disables Samoa in, in many respects, but gives them the opportunity in the other one, a 12-man Australia. It's a big 10 minutes now. Yeah, any chance for Samoa, it has to come. It has to start in this next 10 minutes, doesn't it? What can they do? Milford. Here's Tapao. Spencer Lenu, by the way, has come on in place of Harris Tavita, but he's a prop, so it's not exactly like for like. Milford's moved into the dummy half position. Here is Lenu. Wrestling his way with those fresher lungs and fresher legs than most of those on the field at the moment. 15 meters out, Milford goes a scampering. Papalihi, you'd never accuse him of scampering, he just drives it in. Milford again, looking right, Luai back, Crichton trying to step, Stephen Crichton, five strides away from where they want to be, but they have to start again here, and it's a very slow play the ball, Toho, Luai, Paolo passes it on, Milford is taken as soon as he gets the ball, last play, last play, Luai goes oh. wide, and here's... Oh, it's, it's a flick out! Oh, it's a forward pass. Forward pass. Suhali flicks it away, but it was clearly a forward pass, and the Australian defenders congratulate themselves on a job well done. Well, it's massive scramble. And Tony May thinks he's got the first goal for some over. There's the ball, Suhali, clearly, yeah, clearly forward. Clearly, clearly forward. So Australia just pounded out here. Back to basics. Yeah, they won't, they won't rush this now. Ball in hand, kill the clock as well. I know it's going to be a, an extra enthusiastic Samoa just at the moment. They'll want to knock that enthusiasm out of them, but they've just given them another initiative. There we are. Sir takes the ball from Carrigan's clumsiness. Five, six tackles to go from here. Here's Milford. Paolo just driving it in, hips bounce Woo! off Australian shoulders. Oh, Milford delivering inside. This is Papalihi this time. Papalihi, sheer determination. But you can't move mountains when they're wrapped around you. Milford goes left, Luai further left. Suolihi with a pass away, a reach for the line here from Lafay. Held up just short. Back to Luai. Flung back, not a good ball. Crichton picks it up. Sometimes a bouncing ball can confuse the defence, but not when it's prepared like this Australian defence. Milford, dummy right, went left. Papa Lee, he just went for the rally. And he wasn't far short. He was going for it there. Milford again. Suhalihi, a step back from Luai. Desperation stuff. Milford steps away from the advancing Murray. Now he gets it left. The kick to the in goal, Grant has it covered, and he's as cool as you like in seeing it out of play. He's been everywhere since he's come on, hasn't he? Grant, he's had some cover tackles, he's playing full back position there, watching the kick. And that's what they do, they cover each other's backs, they're very clinical, yeah. they work hard for each other, even with 12 there. You're going to have to be good to break this kangaroo defence open. Unfortunately there, the kick had to go to the left-hand side, that's where the, the, his winger was, no, no covering defenders there. 30 minutes left of the 2021 iteration of Mark Rugby League's Strait, World Cup. Akia, Delayed by a year by Covid, but has given us so many special Mark moments Akia. over the last five weeks. Australia looking to do what hey, they do best. Win on this stage. <laughs> well, untidy. Well, they've untidy. Had a, they've had a few calls go for them now some more. They've just got to capitalise on it. Yeah. The drop ball by Mitchell, He's struggling to get out of their own half, doing it one-up rugby, Pahalihi, Pahalihi all over him, and he drops the ball. Damien, injury update down there. 
Yeah, just a word on Chanel uh, Harris Tavita. His uh, game is over. He's looking very groggy, uh, sitting on the bench there among the Samoan interchanges. Uh, had a quick word with the doctor. He's not having a, a head injury assessment. His, his, his World Cup final is over. Yeah. His rugby league career might be over. As we were saying earlier, thinking of retiring at the age of 23. Samoa, now the chance of Samoa goes round. This crowd at Old Trafford, mostly with a northern accent, a northern English accent. Ball still, oh, yeah, one on one, big, nothing big, wrong with that. Big call, not the first time he's done it. He's been very good on the ball stealing in the World Cup, Munster. So Australia by hook or by crook have got the ball back again. And here's Ado Carr. Grant at dummy half, Trebojevic is back there, but it's going to be Latrell Mitchell who drives it in onto the halfway line. Australia just steadying themselves, four minutes and 40 seconds with a man short but they're doing all right at the moment with that disadvantage Trebojevic an unlikely acting halfback Tedesco looks tempting the defenders with a ball that is kept alive Australia still showing plenty of ambition here Whiten takes it right into the heart of the Samoan defense one play and 15 meters to try and get this one, and they do. What about that pass? What about that angle from Cameron Murray? That might just have knocked the stuffing out of Samoa. Australia, pure class. Well, it's not just Australia, it's that man Cleary with his pass selection. Boy, he's some player. Cameron Murray comes up with the right line, on the, an outside line on the defender. There's no, there's no right to do that. It's Nathan Cleary with the pass. Here we go. Well, here's the ball seal for Munster. That's the momentum changer that Australia wanted. Because it was all some old at that point with 12 man, and here's Cleary at the line, and just great line from Murray. And again, I think they've um, they've targeted Milford. Just watch. He just goes for the intercept. You cannot do that. You got it all or nothing. He just just doesn't. He just watch. There he goes. He delayed pass. Milford. It's an outside swerve. But he just can't afford to go for the intercept. We don't get it. That's what happens. And that's with 12 men. They'll be back to 13 in three minutes. That's, you can feel a, a kind of a, a rumble going round the stadium. We were here to see Samoa win. But you know what? We've got to admire this Australian team. Almost hear that conversation going round Old Trafford at the moment. Nathan Clear has not had the best of days with his conversion attempts. Looking to improve here. Partizan crowd trying to put him off, but uh, they don't do that. That's the best of the day. The best kick of the day from uh, Nathan Cleary. 20 points to nil now. Australia lead. It's an inexorable march. Yeah, he hasn't had a good game maybe with his goal kicking, but the selection of passes, as a second try scoring pass he's given today. Check about Cameron Murray as well, because you've got to have somebody there willing to accept boxes at the line like that, and that's a skill in itself. And then, like you said, Jonathan, he runs an outline on the outside of Milford. So Trebojevic brings it out. And Kev Brown has uh, got news for us down, downstairs, Kev. Yeah, just really impressed with, well, the, the prop forwards, we should probably call them middles though for Australia. They're so fit and athletic and the leg speed they've got makes it so hard for Samoa to create any space. Even when, you know, they're down to 12 men, they've got so much, you know, fitness in the tanks, it's so difficult. But even when they flip over and they get the ball, Cameron Murray's still got the energy to hit that line and score the try. Where does that magic come from, yeah, Brian? Because, I mean, you look at this Samoa team, and we, we've we called it. They've got so many Penrith grand final winners Last in there. Tackle, Why are they not able to match Australia? Is it something about the green and gold? Is it something yeah. about Malmeninga? What is it? It's the culture of, of the way Australians like to play rugby league. It's their number one sport in the country, on the eastern seaboard at least. The, 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 the mythology around the kangaroo since since the late 70s, you know, the, the fact that the last minute here, the last minute there, yeah, penalty yeah. some more. 
I think it's penalty. Through Australia, the is it? That's very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. It's penalty to uh, Leighton Cleary there. He's off the He's ground. The off the ground. We saw one of those against George Williams, didn't we? A penalty that England got in the semi final. Similar situation. Off the ground, vulnerable. So it's a penalty from I, where the ball lands. I'm not sure about that. Like, as, as a. Yeah, as, a, as a kick downfield, you know you're going to get under pressure. You keep your foot up. As a harsh, for me, it's a harsh call. They tap and go here, don't they? Yes. And in England do have some world champions. And that's the England wheelchair rugby league team who won in such dramatic style last night against France. And even a legend like Jamie Jones Buchanan wants some uh, autographs from those England players. Former Leeds Rhino star collecting the uh, the Ruiz. signatures. Can Australia right going again here. Go 50 one. seconds Get with up, only 12 up. men on the field. Can they get a second try under those circumstances? Cameron Murray drives it in. Harry Grant waiting once more. He goes from dummy half with a zip and a real dash. But there's enough Samoan bodies there to make sure he's not going to get that ball down. Held up, go back 10, start again. They are relentless, aren't they? Absolutely relentless. Grant's ready to go. I believe he comes up. There's Marker, here we go. Time back on again. Clear it, offering it back down the middle. Isaiah Yo with a push. Harry Grant with a patient wait. Monsters to this left hand side, but it's Cleary on the right who's going to be playmaker, magic maker. But Last tackle, Jerome, get off! Four defenders drag him down. Last play, Grant. Here's Tedesco Good and tackle. penalty offside, I think. Well, it was obstruction, wasn't it? Obstruction. The shepherding there, right behind his own player. Well, Crichton's back on the field now, so yep. they're back to 13. Full compliment. To the penalty. The Back here, guys. <coughs> Hold here, guys. So Samoa somehow. Okay. They've just got to go back to the well. Go back to that inspiration that they found in the semi-finals. Somehow move. lift themselves here. here Jake, wait. Create okay. some hey, self-belief, hey. even if nobody else believes they can get On back now. into this World Cup final. They Go must create some okay. self-belief. Luai offers it off. Papalihi. He's one of those Make who will move. lead by example. Oh, Drive them down the middle. Jake, on now. They need some flash and flare outside as well. Lingi Sao gets it away. Now it's Luai. Oh. Junior Paula to Papalihi. The two big men have gone backwards. Papalihi trying to offload, has lost the ball. Adokar is a little untidy. There's a push and a shove down the middle. Knock on Samoa. It'll be Australia who yeah, get it back. Frustration again, creeping in, trying to get the miracle offload. The kangaroos set the highest standards yes. for rugby in, in the world. You know, people talk about, I don't know, if you're talking about rugby generically, the All Blacks and all of the things they've done and the legacy of things. This kangaroo team have been dominant for 40 or 50 years now. And if only the, the Australians realised what they got. Exactly. Because we never see them. And that, that's got to be the encouragement, because unless you play them every other year, you're not going to match those kind of standards. No, you but need to play the best. Well, it's three years since they played anybody. When they played against Tonga at Auckland, when they got beaten by Tonga. That's why this is such a, a new team. It's been such a long time since they played together in their national colours. Cleary spins it back. Monster. And now it's with Adokar is found the outside. What a kick from Adokar that is. And I'm not sure if he's touched it down there. Did he have it or lose it? Angus Crichton back on the field. Went off as a bad boy. Is he back as a hero? But Adokar, I mean if this is given Adokar. He just takes a great angle on the outside arc. Brilliant wing play. Well, his nickname's a fox, <coughs> and I don't know if that's because he just runs around people free, or he's got the last his tail no or whatever try. the reason is for Please it. Please check all he just blows people away. on onside, offside, through to grounding. Players must have both feet behind the ball to be classed as onside. Pause the ball on the foot. Yeah, all players are, all players are onside. We can go to the grounding, please.
takes possession there. He then, he then loses possession of the ball. I'm happy I viewed all available angles. I've made my decision. So no try, but again an example of that corporate approach. Adokar is, is sitting on the verge of a record, you know, as a winger, his instinct is to go for a try, but his rugby league now says there's a better opportunity for the man on the inside if I can get the kick away. Well, it's clearly a knock-on from Brighton. Yeah. Yeah. He's a complete winger though, isn't he? Such, such a good player, Adokar. Samoa come again. They look a little bit flat now, some more, don't they? Just look at them, they're all kind of bunched a little bit. As Kevin said, they're playing as individuals, not as a team. Royce Hunt. Got it back. Can't move. Got it back, you Six heard the referee game. shout. Go. Another set of six. As Paolo. Junior Paolo's been great the whole tournament, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right down the, the middle. Front. Hunt again, oh, quick hands, out to Suhalihi. Great handling, but Australia's defence responds. Don't forget there's another World Cup kicking off tomorrow. Qatar against Ecuador, that first game. Here's Paolo. <laughs> Sua. Lafay's closed down. Australia swarming all over them. He's been good defensively, hasn't he? Valentine Holmes. They've all been good defensively. Yeah, yeah. Luai, and that's the challenge. Papalihi again, Papalihi. Can move! Trying to get Mark the arms free. Milford. Luai. Looking lively. Oh, almost an interception. Instead, it's an opportunity. And Brian Tahoe. There's a noise. And there's a celebration. Much, but it's a start. 20 minutes for the miracle of Manchester. Well, it's a tall order, but Brian Toho has just given his side maybe a glimmer of a hope. Well, Brian Toho has been one of the superstars in this tournament every time he gets the ball. And I think it's Luai that comes up with a big speculator for crying to find the pass play. Here we go. Luai on the way back thinks, wow, get this out there. Oh, brilliant catch and pass. Yeah. It's Latrell Mitchell comes the intercept, no, doesn't he? Doesn't, doesn't get it. it. There's a two on one. Luai comes back against the grain, throws a wide pass. Latrell Mitchell doesn't get it. It's a run in for a quality player like this man. Well, he Ryan took a chance, Toho, didn't he, yeah. Mitchell? He's, he's looking for the intercept. He's looking about going down there. Leaves Adokar a bit in the lurch there. Just on the inside, you left me in the lurch there, man. Yeah. But Brian Toho, who's been a superstar in this tournament, dives into the corner. And Luai again is, uh, is the architect of that break and that He's, opportunity. But they've got to chase it now, they've got a little bit, they've got to chance the arm a little bit some more. Well, the encouragement comes from a raucous Manchester Raw. Do they believe? That's the question. 16 points in it, they have to score three more. Even if Stephen Crichton kicks this over, it's still three tries required. Crichton, well, he struck that really well. Struck that really well. Nice kick. They called him the boot of God with a drop goal in the semi final. And that was a terrific strike from the touchline. Again, you know, he's. A lot of pressure's been put on him now with Milford moving into uh, at the half back. But what a beautiful pass just over the head of Latrell Mitchell. Easy running for Toho. Tell you what, they score again, and yep. suddenly the mood changes dramatically, doesn't it? And there's just a sense of what might be inside this stadium. But Australia will have picked that up as well, and they will double down in their efforts. Oh, here, wait, wait, From deep. And again, it's a change, you know, Grant's gone off at hooker. And Hunt has come on, and Hunt will run at the, the tired forwards now, the Samoan forwards. Just different, different player, number three, there he is. 
Milford switching left, Paolo. Pushing hard. Help! Still pushing, Release! still pushing. Release. Shows the referee. Oh, Paolo pitched good. another yard or two. Papalihi oh. now. Just battering it in. Now they lift themselves. Help! They've both come to oh, life, haven't they? Paolo and yeah. Papalihi yeah. around yeah. the middle. Now or Ten. never for Samoa. Luai's kick. High and swirling. Safely caught. Okay. Valentine Holmes brings it back with Menace. Jayden, Gilma! Adokar searching down the middle. Surrender! Off the starting blocks, but Stand! immediately Jayden, into that barrage of blue ahead of him. Lee, let go, Gilma! Ben Hunt. Day three. Australia just looking to settle here, take it Surrender! inside the Samoan half. Okay, Josh. Straight forward Go stuff, forward. put the pressure back on the boys in blue. Oh, and that's an untidy pass! Oh, and it was taken by Toho. And again, if he kept his feet. But yeah. second best is Samoa back in possession. And Tuilangi will keep pushing and pushing. And listen to the noise now. Yeah, it's all going up. Lifts again. Our self doubt surfacing amongst these Australian players. Suhalihi so dashing in. Milford to the right hand side and Paolo. Paolo picking the pad. Questioning whether they can stop him and they do. Milford. Luai drops it back off again. Big effort from Royce Hunt. Hunt inside the 10. They've had five. Here comes the sixth attempt. Milford to Luai. Quickly batted on. Misconnections. May picks it up. Lafay tries to get away from those circling Australian defenders, but they do a grand job. Yeah, just to hold their depth a little bit there. Just a little bit overrun the ball. It's the urgency yeah. with which Australia yeah. cover every situation. So where the threat is, where the ball is. And they cover the ball really well, irrespective of what pass play has gone on or offload. Yeah. Munster. Trying to get away, trying to get an offload. Race, but let him up. Don't hold Samoa with a crushing tackle, so making sure that hold it's hold slowed it. down as well. Go, the defensive line is ready Josh. to get up as quickly as it possibly can. Jalen, get up! Josh! Josh, here! Hold here, Kelvin. First of all, Lee, he made, an, he made an impact when he came on the semi final, didn't he? Yeah. That's fine. Yo. Let him up, Jerome, next to me, come on. Hunts again, just has a little That's crafty good. glance around. Taken on by Tedesco. Tedesco has nice a right tackle. foot step. Little unbalanced. Australia Back 10, junior. with their last in this set. So Cleary puts it up in the air. High in the Play air. So he gets up and takes it well. But immediately Latrell Mitchell is there to grab a hold and put him down and say that's where you need to start from. And they need a bit of flash and flare. It's a gut-wrenching tackle though. Smashing effort from Whiten. And here's Crichton. Crichton with the offload. Samoa trying to build something Ten out of nothing move. here. Go, Oof. Look at that shoulder, well aimed, hits the target. I'm together, Ben! Right here, Jake. Go, four, the green and goals there. are getting back in position defensively as quick That's as they can. Right. Samoa begin to move it left. Lafay with a couple of steps. Last tackle, Jack! But they're going to have to give up possession here. Ten, Jack. Ten what, meters inside their own right. half. On the last, Milford Keep eventually. Going. Ball finds him, Adokar backs back and lets it bounce. Should make it easier, does in the end make it a bit easier. And Adokar is bumped down by Tuilangi. What do you reckon? Is there a chance? Or do Australia turn the screw from here on Yeah, they need a chance at arm again, don't they? You can see what they're trying to do, get the offload. But they're just so solid, aren't they? They'll just do the basics, as I've said earlier. They get it back into position quickly. Mitchell there with a barging Marty, effort. Australia now, 12 metres inside Samoan territory. Cleary, loose. Trying to settle things down. It's Campbell Gillard with all the force and ferocity that he has. It's Hunt at dummy half, skipping away. Cleary back to Munster. Munster on the inside like a surgeon's knife. They just unpicked that Samoan defence. They opened it up. They tantalised. They taunted. 
and then they score, and Tedesco, the skipper, has just settled Australian nerves. Wow. That's a brilliantly, brilliantly worked side that is. That's a set play. That yeah, what a set play that is. The communication between this guy, Munster, Tedesco, on the inside shoulder. They just work the middle defence of Samoa, move them about a little bit. It's a drop off. They come the other side, and then another inside pass. What a beautiful play! Just, just watch it. Clearly goes Munster inside pass. They target Paolo, the prop. Junior Paolo is tired. He's had a tremendous game, but you can't, you cannot. What a play! It's the spine from Australia. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Hunt, Hunt Tedesco. Monster, so Hunter Monster, that's a Cleary. There's Monster, there's Tedesco on the inside. So that's 9 7 6 1 right up the middle of the field. Set play from the training ground. When you get the lazy players, yeah. and he's had a great game, James Tedesco. He's icing on the cake to finish that one. But well, that's straight from the game plan. That's straight from Ben Hunt jumping out to the right hand side, finding Cleary, who finds Monster, who tracks the. Well, not lazy, they're tired defenders. Yeah. They've tried their hearts out. He has had a brilliant game, hasn't he? Junior Paolo, but, you know, you cannot... He's, he's there on his own, they pick him out. The inside ball, he's got to get across and get to Desco. Brilliant, brilliant Australian try. For a moment, there was hope for Samoa. And then came another wave from Australia. Ten minutes to play, just over. Cleary settles himself. Looking to add to his... Uh, points haul in this tournament 26 points to six now the aussies are back in control and he knows it Samoan coach matt parish and i'm guessing he knows as well that it's going to be another australian victory the skipper of the Roosters, skipper of New South Wales, skipper of Australia, James Tedesco, wherever he goes. He just paints rainbows. Crichton putting it high. A little bit of a gamble. But there, who's there? Tedesco's there to make sure that Australia had it back. And he, he called that right from the kick. So from the kickoff, they're going short here. I'm going to throw myself up there because I'm a good catcher. I'll put myself in the dangerous position. And he comes up with the catch. Jaden Stephen! Captain he fantastic. He's been Jaylen's brilliant, doesn't he, Tedesco? Oh, oh, he's in. Grayton with an interception. And he's going to get one back. A little bit of consolation. He's making a habit of World Cup interceptions. Broke England's hearts in the semi-final. Just puts a little bit of a dent in the celebration of Australia. But that's a great personal moment from Stephen Brighton. Puts Samoa into double figures. As arena of the game. He's proving himself to be very, very good. Hits the pocket again. Yeah. Pinch his pocket there, didn't he? Benhunt. Jumped out of marker. Gets the intercept. Gotta give Stephen Crichton credit there. Bats it up, gets the ball. Gonna be gonna win the race of the corner for sure. And it's, it's a fair reflection of Samoa's efforts today. Well, smiles on faces. The face at the the hope of these Samoan supporters that they've always got smiles on faces, win or lose. They just enjoy what they're watching. And so proud. You know, just to underline again, new world order in rugby league, represented by those fans and the players they are here to cheer. A World Cup final, who would have thought that? Four years ago? Last World Cup, they were beaten in the quarterfinals by Australia by 46 points to nil. Brighton hits the post, 10 for Samoa, 26 for Australia. What a journey they've been on in that last five years to reach this pinnacle. Well, this tournament particularly, they surpassed their great rivals, the Tongans, and been to the well so many times over the last few weeks. That was a brutal class, Tonga Samoa in the quarterfinals. Then they have the England emotional going to the wide, golden point, and then they get the final, so...
Some of Sydney these boys Giants. playing in the NRL now, they, you know, they're stand-up players, superstars in the Australian competition, the Samoans and Tongans, you know, they're mixing with the Kiwis and the Aussies, and it's benefiting them on the international scene as well. Not, not quite the same buzz of potential and what might be right after there. that try because right time there. now is yeah. totally right. against Samoa. Yeah. You know that that try by Tedesco just killed it off. Yeah. He's if they get if they get one no, <laughs> might be a little bit exciting. Oh, but give over, Jiffy. Give over. Seven minutes to play against Australia. Three tries scored. No. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but they will keep trying anyway. They'll keep pushing. To power. Blasting it forward. Jerome Moore has had some game on the quiet. Yeah. Oh. Well, as I say, that he falls over. Last Commentator's tackle. curse. I think he's had to, hasn't he? Since uh, geez, he's, uh, Milford has gone to acting half back. High and asking the kick. Tedesco with a very solid catch under the circumstances. And again, a carry that. Challenges that Samoan line and a yes, leap to his feet to get it played. Every time he gets the ball, he makes good yards, doesn't he? Australia on tackle two. The short of the halfway line. Go one, come on, Marty. Ado Carr still searching, still searching. A 13. Is he going to end the tournament on 12, just like his teammate Valentine Holmes did? Back in 2017, That's fine. Campbell Gillard. Josh, get up! Hunt. Back here, back here. Six here, David, minutes right here. Wait. of the season remaining. Six minutes of a World Cup remaining, and Tedesco ain't finished yet. Go, Hunt. Good. They're moving it left. Adokar wants it. The kick is not the best from right Munster. I think he was actually trying to get it in the corner because yeah, Adokar was, was pointing at the line. Out of the way. But it was a he scruffy kick. Tackle one. Wait. It's given one. some other possession back again. But it's a thankless task here, isn't it? Toho trying to bring it out. And look oh. at that from Australia. They got the game won. They want to win it now. Wait here. Wait. even better. Wait. Wait. Crichton. This is where they're good. You know, someone's got to earn every yard. Lewis spinning left and uh, just causing a bit of palpitation yeah. in that Australian defence. Tim Lafay. Paolo does well to drag it in. They've gone all the way to this um, this right hand side. It's lost. Lost by Sua. But he's yeah, given it to Samoa's middle, way, a, a drag out by an Australian hand is the decision. I think Mitchell pulls the ball out. Yeah, pulls it forward. Yeah, he goes forward, yeah. Going. He's allowed to ball steal there, isn't he? Because he was the last man left in the tackle. But What's going, guys? Yeah, it just went forward, didn't it? went forward. That's all right. He's struggling there, he's a cramp, I think. He's not affecting this. So, player of the match. Eddie, Stephen! The hands of the trainer are playing on. So yeah. Off. Let's go, For Steven. me, you know, it's I think clearly he's played exceptionally well, but the, the player of the match has oh, got on, to hang be. On, hang, hang on, on, hang on. We'll hang on. Move out! Back here, wait. Wait, Regan, Regan, wait. We'll come back to that in just a moment, Jiffy, because Samora just threatening something here, Sualihi. Nathan, move! Let's see it, Hold down! Let's go, shoot. Paolo. That's fine. The ball, the ball. Isaiah, get up! Nice here. Okay, Here's Milford picking up and scampering. <laughs> Paolo, nowhere to go. Smothers the ball out. Australian six. hand. Move Another up. set for Samoa. As Tapao takes it in. 20 meters out from that Australian line. That's zero. Milford. Just yeah. making sure his teammates know that it's six again. He's just put his hand in the air just to make sure that they don't have to panic here in any of the next couple ten, of plays ten. because they've got yeah, plenty of plays to go. Three minutes. Can they grab another That's consolation? Five. Luai. Five. And it's a push for the line. Lenu just dragged down. Milford. Luai. Oh, it's a kick and a chase, but a wonderful diving save from Crichton. He put his body on the line there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. 
Fantastic dive on the ball, loose play. It's a missed kick from Lowe. He was. Well, as I said before, I think he's been brilliant for some more this evening. Just couldn't find enough juice in his leg. No, no contact on the kick. That's OK, dribbles. player of the match. I think Cleed has been brilliant, Martin's been brilliant, but the standout player for me this afternoon is James Tedesco. He's been absolutely brilliant. Every time he's carried ball, he's made good yards. He's made 184 metres. You know, he's got a couple of tries. So what a play, what a game he's had. Australian captain leading from the front. So well done to James Tedesco, the Kazoo player of the match. The captain. Capping his performance. Cleary's behind the 40 meter mark when he lets that fly. It's bounced out beyond the 20. Australia get the ball back here with an attacking tap. 15 meters out. It's Australia's number one, James Tedesco. Here's the kick. There's a bit of excitement on the field because um, we have an intruder. It draws a smile from Mal Meninga. Actually, the intruder has a bit of a Mal Meninga build to him, doesn't he? <laughs> But same sidestep as well. Yeah. We beat three stewards there. Two more coming. We're getting back to the player of the match. James Tedesco has just been outstanding. It was an easy decision in many respects, but he's been complimented by a brilliant kangaroo team. I think the intruder's going off for a HIA. I think the rest of his body's in injury as well now. Why did you just walk him off the shot this way off? One more carry for Tedesco takes him to over 200 metres in the game. Yeah. These are the two tries that have helped him stand out today, but his defensive efforts as well have been fantastic, haven't they? Yeah, the way he takes a ball back, you know, from a kick, he just gets on the front foot. And off. Nathan! Nathan! 90 seconds to go. You can see smile it. from the big man. You can see they want Ado Carter score, didn't they? Australia setting up camp. They'll get a full set here. Time for that. Just smashed forward by Campbell Gillard. Ado Carr is bouncing up and down on the left hand side. Wants that ball to come his way. It's coming his way, but then clearly steps back to the middle. And Ado Carr is desperate. Now it works back, but then it's to the middle again. Help! Last minute of the game, last minute of the World Cup. Short pass. A reach that doesn't quite make the line. Tries to get it, doesn't he? Hunt. Tedesco. Tedesco looking for a hat trick. Keeps it alive. Bounces it back to Martin. Martin. Hunt shouts to him from the left-hand side. Oh, brilliant ball, and it's going to be Lateral Mitchell who glides over for what will be what a, pass. a bit of crowning glory for Australia. World champions, world class. They're celebrating a try-scoring moment. They're celebrating a World Cup win. The World Cup final for Australia. The great, the true Mitchell. Well, that's why everybody raves about Nathan Cleary. Because they're trying hard here some more. They're walking their line forward. They don't want anything to happen. Cleary gets hold of the ball and woof. Straight to the troll. Yeah. Mitchell's on the outside of Stephen Crichton. Crichton gets for the intercept yeah. again, doesn't he? Death or glory. And what a try, what a finish. Even time for a little celebration as he's flying over the line. That's nice when you can celebrate a try in a World Cup final, you know. You know the cup is going to Australia. They can lie on the beaches now with, as world champions. Because you got to, you know, they do come here under a lot of pressure because everyone expects them to win. I think it was Ado Carr who tried that conversion. Yep, and that's it. Watching the replay. But it doesn't matter. Old Trafford rises to salute.
the world champions Australia. It's not an unfamiliar feeling for those in green and gold. It's the 12th time they will lift the World Cup. Mal Meninga, Adrian Lamb, a sense of huge satisfaction. Celebrations on the field. They came here as not an unknown quantity. We knew their star quality individually. It was a question of how well they played as a collective. Well, any doubts, snubbed out right from the start. And they kept those standards up all the way to the finish. You have to salute them. They just keep on delivering. They did try a late conversion. Ado Carr was trying to drop Cole it over. I don't think anyone's going to complain to him about that. But he is a character. Stays level on World Cup tries in a tournament. Shares it with Valentine Holmes from five years ago. Great moment for those Australians. But a word for Samoa as well, having made the final. Well, I think they've been brilliant in the tournament. They came, the first game they were, you know, smashed by England. But, you know, they regrouped, they played well. Massive win in the semi-final. But against a very, very solid, very professional Australian side. Fantastic well, the win. Player of the match is James Tedesco. He's down there, Australia winning by 30 points to 10. And James Tedesco is down there with Damian Johnson. James Tedesco, the Aussie captain, is with me. Congratulations, James, you're a world champion. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, come over here six, seven weeks ago, this group of blokes, and uh, we've borne such a close bond. It's so special representing our country and putting this jersey on, so, um, yeah, it's a really proud moment at the moment. How did you manage to bond as a team? Because there's been so little international rugby league of late. Yeah, I know, it's killed us you know, last three years with COVID not being able to play you know, for, our, for our country, but uh, we just, yeah, just come over here early, formed a close bond on another field. We just, just got along straight away. So it's important to build that connection from the start and we just wanted to work hard for each other and show that tonight. You've had a taste of World Cup Rugby League in the past with your country of heritage, Italy. Very different player for Australia and a winner. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm Australian. Mum and Dad are born in Australia. I'm born in Australia, so... It's very special to put this jersey on, uh, you know, represent my family and friends back home, and I know they're all watching, so shout out to them, and um, yeah, it's unbelievable, it's an unbelievable feeling. Quite a few stars in the Australian team have emerged that we didn't know in the Northern Hemisphere, people like Josh Adokar, Nathan Cleary, and, and, and Adokar was on for a record, and he's been a creator tonight. Yeah, he was, he was unbelievable all tournament, uh, Joshy, Luttrell, Nate, just it was a team full of superstars, and we knew we had the individual brilliance, but it was just about bonding as a team, and you know, we got better and better each game, and this is probably our best performance, so uh, yeah, it's a great feeling. Congratulations, well done, James. Thank you, cheers. Uh, really nice shots down on the field at the moment. Uh, the Australian and Samoas congratulating each other. Also, the Australian women have come on pitch side as well with the World Cup that they won earlier when they beat New Zealand. So they're ready to celebrate with their male counterparts as well. Let's get more reaction from the touchline of the Australian coach Mal Meninga with Damien. The Australian coach Mal Meninga is with me. Uh, congratulations, Mal. A World Cup winner again. Yeah, no, fantastic. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... It's one of those games you sit up there and, you know, the first half was, for us, uh, exceptional. I thought we, we did everything we needed to do and uh, second half we scrambled well defensively. You know, one man down and we scored some points whilst that happened. Um, just a mark of a great footy team, uh, committed to each other and, yeah, really happy for the boys. James Tedesco, your captain, a worthy player of the match? Absolutely, you know, so, I mean, I don't know how many run and run meetings he got tonight, but he was everywhere. He's an everywhere man, two tries. Um, led the side through the week, you know, really, really well. He's, he's talked through the week and the way he, he trained was, was exceptional. So, yeah, he was on tonight and uh, we need him. It's a team full of stars, Mal, um, but it's very much a team, isn't it? How have you brought them together with so much or so little international rugby league in the last few years? Uh, well, that's the mark of the, of the people that they are, you know, so they're they're really committed to each other, you know, we, those initial conversations all around the team and humility and respect, being respectful of, 
um, of the jersey, but you know our opposition and things like that, um, they responded really well, and I just felt that I thought they brought their best game tonight. You know, they had to work really hard. Uh, it's a tough, tough tournament. You know, and as the tournament goes on, fatigue starts to starts to kick in. They've had a long, long year. Uh, but they've been rewarded for effort tonight and, um, you know, it's been a, a really good way to finish our, our you know, 2022 season. Samoa wouldn't go away at 20 points to six. Did you sense perhaps a comeback, get a bit nervy? Oh, I'm really confident in this footy team, you know, so, you know, we made a few errors that allowed them back into the game, to be honest with you, but, um, you know, I was, I was really confident uh, defensively, I thought. like. When we were dead 12 men down against you know, a Samoan side that was throwing everything at us, so I felt I felt that that was the, the not the turning point, but the, you know I felt very comfortable after that. Congratulations, Mel Walden. Yeah, thank you. If you want to know those Tedesco, James Tedesco stats, by the way, 22 carries for 199 meters, comfortably the most meters made by any player uh, on the field. Also, a couple of offloads four tackles as well and just the one error what a leader he was let's hear from the Samoan head coach now with Tanya Arnold Matt commiserations I know you will have wanted to win that but boy your players have done you proud over the last few weeks yeah just disappointed with the result but you know couldn't be prouder of the effort uh, their courage and commitment to the cause you know they played against the champion team tonight and um, we were just too good. We just ran out of troops in the end. It's if, buts and maybes, isn't it? But you were so good in that first sort of 10, 15 minutes and just couldn't get over the line. Yeah, no, we needed to... Uh, we just couldn't quite get close enough to put enough pressure on them throughout the game. But as I said, I'm really proud of this group and uh, what they've done and what they've been able to do and even their performance tonight. You know, they just kept trying right to the end. It's not just about what they've done on the pitch, is it? I mean, what you have done for Samoa and for Samoan people around the world has been incredible. Yeah, it's been a fantastic journey. And, you know, like, uh, just like to thank all the Samoans all around the world that have supported this team. And um, we're so humbled and proud to be uh, part of this Samoan team. And, you know, to have so much, so many support around the world, it's been incredible. You've been part of this journey for a fair few years. I mean, it's been quite a journey, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And it's been uh, unbelievable. And, you know, the support that we've got, you know, in England and in the UK, again, all around the world, it's been unbelievable. And, I, you know, I'm so touched to be part of this team and to see how they've influenced a lot of people around the world. And what next for this team? Because you'll hope this is just the beginning. Yeah, oh, look, I think everyone needs a good break now. It's been a tough tournament. A lot of these guys have had a very, very tough year, so they'll go back to their clubs and regroup and uh, get ready for another year, year of NRL, and then hopefully a calendar for their... Uh, International game will kick on. You know, the tournament's been great. Obviously, you know, we need more games for the Pacific Nations to thrive. And um, I think, you know, hopefully that'll happen. So might we see you back here in the next couple of years? <laughs> Let's hope so. Matt, thanks ever so much. Commiserations today, but well done and a great tournament. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great interview from Matt Parrish down on the uh, touchline just below us at the moment. The Australian women have formed a guard of honour for the England men's wheelchair team as they go through. And they just, um, as you would if you bought a, you and your mate had got a pint, they just clinked World Cups together uh, uh, as, they, uh, as the wheelchair team came out. It is a real celebration down there at the moment. And there is uh, one World Cup trophy still to be presented, which is the men's. Uh, the Australians are just gathering ready. The Samoans are just sitting uh, on the turf at the moment, shattered, I would imagine, after the four or five weeks they have had. Uh, the match officials uh, just getting their uh, medals at the moment. There's a smattering of boots, and I think it's highly unfair on Ashley Klein in particular, who refereed the Australia-New Zealand semi-final as well, superbly. Um, I don't think he did a lot wrong tonight, bar his touch judge spotting a 40-20 in the first half. Anyhow, we're ready for the players to get their medals. Uh, we can rejoin our commentary team uh, and Dave Wood. Well, there's all kinds of celebration, as you say, Chappers, down on the field there. The, uh, the England wheelchair team still fantastic. looking unbelievably, unbelievingly at that uh, World Cup that they have. Chilleroo is waiting to get on, but it's going to be the Samoan players who uh, come up first here to take their runners-up medals. It was a fairy tale until they found themselves in Manchester for the final. 
And then suddenly reality hit home and the Australians hit home. But what a tournament for Samoa. You know, the history books will tell you they were beaten by 60 points to six in the opening game of the tournament. And they look wounded beyond recovery. Three injuries to key players in that opening game. And yet they bounce back. And it will be one of sports all-time great recoveries to lose the opening match of a tournament in such such a way and yet somehow find a way to regroup refocus and get yourself into a world cup final but we knew before we started that this was a world-class team it's a question of whether they could deliver and for the most part they have and we see troy grant the chairman of the international rugby league the governing body of the international game Chris Brindley, MBE, who's uh, the chair of Rugby League World Cup 2021. And John Dutton, the chief executive, handing out the medals as well there as these Samoan teams come through to take their medals. Junior power. Well, it's a time for family now, isn't it? You know, the Australian, the NRL players get looked after very well. They'll have a long break now before they get themselves back in for pre-season next year and they deserve a long break especially those who were involved all the way up to a grand final with Penrith and Parramatta down under it's been non-stop rugby league for 10 11 months for a lot of those players they'll be feeling the aches and the pains a little more than if they'd won and these boys aren't feeling any aches and pains at the moment they're just feeling glory have a look at them it's the latest generation to wear the green and gold they uh, failed to win it when it first started in 1954 that was great britain beating france but ever since then it's been an australian domination of world rugby league be they women or men the first to advance so Australian players come through and those medals hung around some very very proud necks there would have been pressure on them tournament favorites there would have been pressure because of what had gone before the legends that we've seen down the years the Kennys the Sterlings the Johns the Meningas the Miles all those great Australian names who've come here in the past and won and won big but these some less familiar with an English audience because we haven't seen a lot of them down here over the years but they are becoming household names certainly amongst rugby league followers and maybe a wider audience as well Harry Grant the uh, dummy half of the Melbourne Storm try scoring debut against Fiji earlier in this tournament a lot of them making Australian debuts in this tournament. And Mal Meninga, you know, what a legend. 47 Australian caps. He won the World Cup as a captain in 1982. He's now won it twice as a coach. Back to back, 2017, 2022. Josh Adokar shares that try scoring record with his mate Valentine Holmes. 12 apiece in World Cup finals it's a squad game all 24 have been involved at some point throughout the tournament so they will all be adorned with those winners medals Chris, Chris Brindley could do with a step ladder here from some of these tall lads coming through just bend down, son, I'll put it over your neck, thank you. And here he is, the man of the moment, James Tedesco. You know, there have been so many golden stars of Australian rugby league, haven't there? So many standout performers, individuals in a team sport who just embody the spirit of everything. And he is one of those. And that is what he's taking home. Paul Barrier's dream for a World Cup back in the 1950s that's the original trophy lost for a while recovered australia have it back and australia are the world champions a year's delay 
to play this tournament. So they'll go down as winners of World Cup 2021 in the year 2022. They had a style, a luster, a glamour, a pedigree that lifts up to all those who've gone before to wear the green and gold. It's a night of celebration for Australia. I am biased, but uh, everything that is great about this sport is on that pitch at the moment, in the, the past, the present, and the future, really. The, the, the success of this tournament with the men's and the women's and the wheelchair champions all together on the same field. Samoa in the men's side breaking in to a final for the first time in their history, a new finalist standing there on the pitch taking the applause of the crowd and the commiserations of their opponents and then one of the best the game has ever seen jamie peacock in mal maninka in the in the thick of it just watching it all it's it, and, and and a crowd who have been absolutely sensational today for the women and the men's it's it's a, just a really great afternoon. It's a really, really fitting end, I, I think, to the competition. Just looking out from where we're sat now, we like to say the love and respect of Samoa, seeing them breaking to the final. Mal Meninga, for me, is just an absolute legend. It, you know, he's gone on and won a thing. And I think just seeing everybody out there together, it's really brought home. You know, the message has been throughout this World Cup, the most uh, diverse, the most inclusive World Cup. And now we're actually getting to see it with all three teams out there on the pitch enjoying what they've been aiming to do for the last six weeks and win a World Cup. And it's the first time we've seen all of those teams together. So we've spoken about how inclusive it is. But to see the Gillaroos, former Guard of Honour, as our wheelchair team pass through was really emotional. And then what you've got is the historical giants of Australia just proving what it takes to win big trophies. And I agree with you, Mark. I think the atmosphere for a, a, what was we were a, worried, weren't we? We, were, we were worried. Let's be honest. We England were not being here. We thought could flatten things. It's the best atmosphere we've had at the World Cup, and yeah. it was almost a neutral fan base, which is it says something about the attitude of the fans that turned up. And I almost neutral. It was almost. not neutral at all. I say 99.9% .9 of this audience was uh, you know supporting Samoa but yeah I can only reiterate it it, was, it aimed to be the most inclusive World Cup of all time and it certainly was and here we can see the wheelchair team just rolling out there right now and walking out there and they're all doing it on a level platform we all enjoying the success the fans are all enjoying every single one of these teams with the success that they've achieved over the past six weeks. It's, it's it, incredible. It, it took a while to stage manage this because every single one of the Australian women's players wanted to high-five Mal before they went and joined. <laughs> it just says it all, really, about the, the legend of that man. And now the England team uh, are joining them uh, as well. Um, and they are... And they're all together as some of the Australian men's players. There's James Tedesco congratulating the England team, Jack Brown. I just think we've seen everything, which is unbelievable about our game today. You know, like, rugby league is such a special sport. You know, the inclusivity of it, the diversity, the respect. Kevin Sinfield coming on at half-time, that only added to it as well. So some Owens walking around the field here as well. Families there with them. I just love all this. I yeah. love this part of sport we're, for me. We're a sport built on community. We build communities. You know, we've been part of the working class fabric of this country. Rugby League is part of our DNA in the North. But this has shown me an optimistic opportunity for the future of our game. The wheelchair game, the women's game, the men's game, all combined to grow the sport. Never has, a, never has a, a picture of so much Australian celebration filled me with so much pride. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel there. I'm like, I'm like should, I, should, I, be, should, should I be enjoying this or not? I'm, I'm just... It burns the back of your eyeballs, doesn't it? But at the same time, it's, it's, it's rose-tinted as well. Hey, it doesn't burn the back of your eyeballs watching Seb Bashar and the, uh, you know, the team out there, does it? No, exactly. Because look, they've done our country proud. Maybe our other teams have not quite hit the mark or maybe just fell short. 
but it's a story of Australian prowess in the women's game and the men's game. And it's the embryonic start of what's a special story that's developing in front of our eyes, and that's the wheelchair, the wheelchair game. I, I can't see the French referee from last night <laughs> at, uh, at the moment. And, and whilst all of this is going on, and this is really important to mention as well, the Samoan men continue their lap of honour and the crowd, I mean, there is a lot of the crowd that has stayed, and I think we've all been to enough of these seasons, that a lot of the crowd disappear once a trophy has been lifted. But here uh, in, the, uh, in the South Stand at Old Trafford, it is still full, and there will be a lot of Samoan friends and family actually there, just showing their appreciation for their men. That's why it's so important, international rugby league, for these nations to see the best of Samoa, the, the best of Tonga, best of Fiji against the best in the world which are Australia you know to James Tedesco on the screen there he was just outstanding he was head and shoulders above any other player on the pitch yeah, stunning performance from James Tedesco uh, stunning tournament from Josh Adokar proud proud of his history and his heritage within the country of Australia itself with the Aboriginal flag there uh, and, and Luttrell Mitchell also um, a big moment special moments for players uh, and fans as well. It's one of those moments that you're glad you were here to support and here to watch. And I didn't think I'd be saying that. I didn't think I'd have enjoyed this afternoon as much as I have. Yeah. And do you know what? We're watching that um, where all the teams were together. You know, if you're a person thinking about joining rugby league, I, I think you think, do you know what? I, I can do it. I can play this ball regardless of where I'm from, regardless of who I am. This sport will give me an opportunity at some level to maybe play one day at Old Trafford in front of 70,000 people. I think it's a great picture and great message we can three we versions get. of the sport there, out there at the moment. But there's more versions. There's tag, there's touch rugby as well. There's a reason to get involved. Uh, we're going to get some more reaction down pitch side because Junior Paolo has been one of the stars of this tournament. He has given us so much of his time as well. He gave one of the interviews of the tournament after Samoa had beaten England in that semi-final at the Emirates, and I'm delighted to say he's with Tanya again now. Junior, I know you'd rather have a gold medal than a silver one, but can you sum up what this experience this World Cup has been like for you and for your team? Yeah, my little level is so for your mother. Lang in Mama, on the Momosi, Evie, Inga, the tour. Um, it's been an emotional one. Um, walking off this field, I can definitely say that we're proud. Uh, despite the scoreline, I can't imagine doing this journey without any other group of boys besides the ones that turned up today or even the guys that were injured. Um, it took everyone's contribution to to get where we are today and uh, can't go past the support of our nation and our people. Part of the decision to um, put our hands up to represent our heritage was uh, for our families, for our people and for our country and uh, we can definitely walk away with our heads held high. The support you've had in this stadium today but all around the world it must be incredible. Yeah it is. You know, we turned up today and all the fans turned up and they're riding their journey with us as well. And um, credit to Australia for uh, getting the lollies today. Uh, they deserved it. And, you know, I'm definitely proud of those guys as well. Um, they've definitely faced some adversity as well, uh, saying that they weren't passionate about the jersey just as much. But I can definitely tell you that those guys are definitely passionate about wearing the green and gold. And, so happy for them to, to win it and um, I'm happy about both teams you know, turning up today. The, the pride that you have has oozed out of, of you, as with the rest of the team. The emotion at that semi-final was incredible. What do you have, hope happens now? <laughs> um, I think we just get away from footy for a bit <laughs> and we'll deal with it when we're back there. Um, like I said, it was always about um, representing our, our nation of heritage and building the international game. And I can certainly tell you, after this World Cup, such a diverse World Cup, we can look forward to uh, more international games. And whatever we do, I'm sure we can manage to find a way to fit more international games because it's quite the spectacle of seeing everyone turn up. And what was it like getting a, a pre-match message from The Rock, Dwayne Johnson? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, the impact that we've been able to have on the game, and you can certainly see why we've been able to impact it on a global scale, and that's what uh, rugby league does. To you. It helps you build, 
and it's a language we all definitely understand. So, um, yeah, we're just enjoying the moment. Junior, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch you. Thanks ever so much. No, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Cheers. What a superstar he is, and what a great tournament he has had, both uh, uh, on and off the field. Uh, I, know, I know you. I know you like it, John. When I, me I mentioned that, I've, I've got a text from a friend because you're surprised I've got any friends. <laughs> but I've just got an Australian friend of mine says it's 3 a.m. in South Korea, and yes, you should enjoy Australian victories. <laughs> so that's where this is. Being.